Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today we've got another bolo. We're going to talk about old felt and cloth pennants. Let's hop over there right now and show you exactly what we're talking about. So here we go with pennants. Most of the higher dollar ones are going to be sports related. These are literally felt, made out of felt. The letters in many cases are either glued on separate pieces of felt or which what looks like in this case, silk screen designs that would be printed with this screen and ink across the felt itself. They're crude, uh, not the best graphics sometimes, but they're early. These go back all the way to the 1800s. There are military related ones as well. They're for TV shows, musicians, whatever the event was, there were pennants made for many decades of the last hundred years plus. It's a collectible item. Again, many people collect these for different reasons. There are felt collectors that just buy pennants and collect just pennants. I've seen collections of hundreds of these before at estate sales also. This one I believe is for the Pitt Panthers football team from Pittsburgh. This one went for over $1,000, 21 bids. This is about the top of the line for what I see on these, other than some real early campaign related ones for presidential uh, campaigns. Green Bay Packers, almost $1,000, $998. This is the 25th anniversary from the 1940s. Now this one you could have dated, you could have researched the information to find out the 25th anniversary, when that was. Most of this information is available online for this sort of thing. Next one's a 1919 White Sox one, which is dated on the side here in what looks to be a strip of leather, which you will find also. Now these can show up with little holes and flea bites and things along that line in them. I'll still buy them and they still sell very well. This one does look like it has a small hole in it also. Sometimes it can be half gone and still be worth some big bucks just because they're so rare. And this one's a good example of the damage. You can see damage up there in the top right. It looks like it's missing the loop to suspend it on the top right also. And then it has some issues down at the bottom. Still sold for $899. This is from a World's Fair kind of thing, an expo, the exposition. It's racing related as well uh, at the exposition. So rather interesting here. Early, felt, not a, a big pricey thing you would think, but yeah, it still goes for some good money. Now here's one for the Dallas Cowboys, another good example from the 60s, almost $800 on this one. So the age on these isn't always the issue. Chicago Bulls ones can still go for hundreds of dollars, newer ones even. So here's 20th century 48 star flag circular pattern. This is an oddball one. So this isn't something you would see. It was probably for a specific event. This one was probably for some specific event that maybe somebody else knows and the, the person selling it may not. I don't know what event this is from, but I would bet you a million bucks this is from a specific thing and somebody knows that. Probably campaign or political would be my guess. $667 with 14 bids on this one. Now here's Texas Longhorns, 1948, University of Texas, obviously. $549. Muhammad Ali. You can't go wrong, Joe Frazier. As I said, they had them for all kinds of events. The larger they are, usually the more they are worth. That is what I have found out. Now this one looks like it's autographed too. That's another thing you would want to look for on these because sometimes you will run into these and the person selling it doesn't realize there's a signature on it. They'll just assume that it was part of the printing. And I have seen that in person. Never lucky enough to get anyone that's worth a ton more money because of a signature, but I have run into some or been too late to the game, I guess you would say, and, and walked up as somebody else was buying it. So 540 bucks, 28 bids, nice one here from 1971 early one here 1916 Ferguson Bakery it's a felt Honus Wagner now you'd think it's worth a ton of money this is a small one comparatively just a few inches across this one would have shown up in a box of candy from this bakery just like the cigarette and the tobacco related pennants and things they have they're smaller sized there's a huge set of college ones I've had some of them and I've shown them in videos occasionally they all sell any of these little early felt ones. The better the player or the subject matter, the higher they go. Honus Wagner is a real good one, $528 for this small one here. The Cubs can't go wrong, 1938, $511. They're dated for the most part, these early ones. They're usually related to Championship World Series or something along that line. 
it's missing the tip too it says um, and unfortunately let's see we can zoom in so you can see it and there you go it's missing the tip it's probably missing an inch and a half maybe inch and a quarter maybe even up to two inches at the most but not any more than that five hundred and eleven dollars now this is a excellence in production award pennant these were given out during World War II in factory production work positions. They have pins that they would give out to employees that were sterling as well, and window signs and banners and things for your car also. It's a subject matter that I always look for in any type of material, whether it be a banner or a pennant like this. $500. Next one's presidential one, 1908 from a, a Jugget. This is like a political um, campaign stop with news sponsorship to it. It has many holes, flea bites, probably moth damaged from what I would gather on this one. Silk screened image on there of some sort, I would also guess on this. Early, scarce, 435 bucks in this condition. Not much you can do. You could reback this and repair it to some extent, so it would at least look full. I don't know if I would do that with some of these without having it professionally done. I do repairs and have touched on those on my uh, Patreon page, but this might be something that would be kind of left on loan, I would gather in my book. Now here's one for the Pancho Villa uprising, the Mexican-American little conflict there on the border. If you're not familiar with that event, I would really look into it because there's a ton of stuff tied to it. And it's actually a military infantry uh, company that this is uh, related to. Probably uh, commemorative from their service on the border. Went for $427 with 10 bids. I'm surprised it didn't go for more, but it is missing the bottom string. Uh, there might be a little more damage than you can see in here also. So either way, a good example of another pennant topic. Military is key on some of these. As is nautical. Now, this is a ship's pennant. This would have been made to hang from the rigging on a ship, a modern-day ship, uh, or even at the life-saving station. Now, there's uniform buttons and uniforms for this, pamphlets and booklets and postcards, all tied to the life-saving groups. And they had boats and things, and they would go out if, say, a ship uh, beached or something or had a wreck, and they would try and save people's lives. And that was something that was a big, huge thing back in the day before we had modern navigation and things along that line. This goes way back. This one's $421 with 17 bids. The material on this is almost like a gauze. I've had many flags, not particularly this one, but I've had many of the ship's flags. Every ship in the U.S. Navy had rows of pennants that flew across them during World War II and before. So there's thousands of these flags. So don't think that you're not going to turn up something like that. They do show up. They're bigger than uh, many of them just because they hung on a ship. And it's a big ship. Battleships and the whole works had these type of uh, banners, pennants on the ship. Here's one for case tractors and automobiles. Nice early one. Good example. Good condition. It says 1917. I'm not sure how they uh, come up with that date. There may be a catalog for some of these types of material, and it specifically dates them also. So, so information is key. This person sells gasoline collectibles, so he probably knows his stuff, I would gather. $500 on this one. Here's a Boy Scout troop, Rhode Island. Some of these were for a nautical Boy Scout group that they had also. So they have other tie-ins than just, say, a state-related one, Rhode Island. The anchor is the state symbol for Rhode Island, so that is why that's on there. It's on uniform buttons from even back to the Civil War, that same basic anchor. So it's a known symbol if you weren't aware of that. Again, size means everything. 31 inches on something like this. This is very good. It's patriotic colors as well. Probably date this to, say, World War II also. 350 bucks basically on this one. And the last one is a Beatles. I love the Beatles from a concert. There's a ton of reproductions on these, though, so I'm always hesitant to buy any of these, in all honesty, unless there's some major marks on it and I've seen the same one in person and know the difference. There's a few that I can tell instantly the difference just because of the printing on these, but without really digging into some of these, you could get taken. You might see it for 100 and think, hey, that's a good price, and not realize that it's a faux one. Sometimes the difference is the size that they made them. Uh, the printing on the earlier ones, it does have some tiny little spots in it. So if the printing's perfect, I'm a little worrisome when I see those. So just be careful. But a real one, $495. But that's what I have for you today.
Well, there you go. Those are some more items that we do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend. Thank <laughs> you.